Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an angel therapy practitioner, Reiki master, intuitive guide and empowerment coach. And I think of myself as an intuitive astrologer these days as well. But um, today is April 14th, Wednesday, and I've been gone for a couple of weeks. So I wanted to quickly explain to you that um, my lovely Lucky, who's just fine, I don't know if you can, he's, he's underneath the, my desk sleeping, but we had an unexpected vet issue where we went in for a checkup and um, a week later he was having surgery, but he's fine now. And um, we are waiting for a biopsy, but um, I was unable to really find my um, balance here to, to shoot the videos. So I apologize for constantly saying, I'll see you next week. And then <laughs> I'm not quite here. So anyway, apologize for that. Um, I appreciate your support and your patience with me. So this week, um, I'm going to do three spreads for your pick an angel card reading. But I wanted to, as I was doing my meditation, spirit said to me, they wanted me to define how you ask your question. Because we all are co-creating, whether we're aware of it or not. Our thoughts, our focus is creating a momentum. And anything that we focus on for 17 seconds or more starts to create this swirl into the universe. And so when you're asking your question, you might be best served to ask, what is my momentum in this regard? Am I aligned to the outcome I want to experience? Or better yet, am I sitting in alignment with my intentions? And please let me know what is for my highest and greatest good regarding this dynamic. Um, whether it be financial, romantic, work, your children, whatever the, whatever the situation is. So I'm going to start now with angel reading number one. And um, as I shuffle the cards, I'm going to talk about the Kyle Gray card that I pulled for those of you who picked angel reading number one. We have the guardian angel. You are not alone. Now it's interesting because on the face of this card, I want you to see we have the sun and we have the moon and then we have the eye of God above us. That's the way I look at it. Some people may see it a different way, but I want to offer it this way. Today, April 14th, 2021, the sun is in Aries. It is in its exalted position in astrology and the moon is in Taurus, which is in its exalted position energy. So the sun and the moon are in its most favorable vibration, in where it thrives, where they feel um, empowered, inspired, and motivated. So we take the sun, the male energy, and we take the moon, the female energy, and we've got them together. They have been together in exaltation for the last two days. On Sunday the 11th, we had a new moon. This is again where the sun and the moon come together. This is a pivotal time to set an intention of co-creation. It's going to set a dynamic for the next year as we come back to this same spring cycle. So those of you that picked angel reading number one, we see the moon, I'm sorry, the moon and the sun here coming together on this auspicious day. So there's a part of me that says now is a time to be light as a feather as you allow your guardian angels to comfort and guide you as you go into this dynamic of conception, conception mentally and conception physically. So let's see what the reading has to say. Oh, let me start with the angel deck. Our first angel, for those of you that picked angel reading, number one is Rosetta. Talks about parenting, guiding children, teaching. Isabella is, yes, the timing is right for this new venture. Zana is the angel of protection. And then we have Azure saying your desired outcome will happen in the near future. I find Rosetta an interesting energy because while some of you may be wanting to birth physical children into this world, 
Um, I also believe it's what we were talking about with the sun and the moon coming together to conceive a new chapter, a new dynamic within your life. And to know that you have evolved into this place because you have spirit support. So Rosetta is being joined by the focus card. Isabella is being joined by the goblin. Xana is being joined by the fire fairy and Azure is being joined by the burden card. So this is how we go back to the idea that you are not alone. When we start a co-creation with spirit, with our own sense of self, you don't even have to be a spiritual person. You don't have to talk to God. But when you come up with an idea of something that you want to create, whether it be a business, it be a painting, a sculpture, a financial dynamic, whatever it is, you are coming into a dynamic where you are bringing elements together. And this is where I feel like it's important for those of you that picked angel reading number one to set yourself into a place where your job right now is to be childlike in your your focus. And that focus is on how it will feel when this manifestation has come into place. Because in the angel's advice, I'm sorry, in the opportunity obstacle is yes, the timing is right for this new venture. And then we have the ego. And it, you know, on the face of the card, the ego looks wounded and angry, but it is the ego is where our true achievement lives. It's where our sense of exhilaration and accomplishment lives. It's where fear lives. It's where doubt lives. And because of the fear and the doubt, when we are brave enough to be aware of our focus and in some ways not be adult in trying to figure out how that's going to play out, but rather how it will feel when it comes into play, then our ego is working for us because Zana is saying in the angel's advice that you are being protected. And now is a time for optimism. And I want to say the optimism comes because spirit in many ways is involved in this co-creation and they may be conspiring, aka working on your behalf. And if you in your physical body try to push forward to the manifestation, you're going to get in the way. Because in the final position is your desired outcome will happen in the near future. Have patience and faith. And the patience and the faith is a burden. And the, the actual idea of sitting back and giving spirit an opportunity to give you a new experience, to inspire you into a new action is a burden. But what you want, I believe, has so much momentum as I spoke to in the beginning of this video, that you will indeed experience what it is you want to your surprise. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about today, April 14th, 2021, the sun and the moon being in their highest vibrational um, homes and aspects, being in sun and Aries and the moon in Taurus. So these two ideas of man and woman coming together to create new life in some ways. It is your job for those of you that picked angel reading number one to focus in on what the new life feels like, not the road on how you're going to get there because your past will not necessarily indicate the journey forward. And that's why in some respects there's a burden, but you need to know your momentum is such that you feel will be triumphant. All right, let's go on to angel reading number two. So as I shuffle the angel cards, I pulled the magic guardian. And this is unlock the magic within. And um, if you notice, she's holding a bowl. It's a little bit difficult to see because it's kind of within her wing. But I want to offer this because what this says to me is everything is within your emotional body. The cups represent the emotional. So if we're unlocking the magic within, what we're unlocking is the potential and power that resides inherently within the human. And we are a little bit afraid of our power. We have this what if a conditioning um, based on outside circumstances. So as we start to investigate the laws of attraction, the laws of allowing, the laws of the universe, we understand how and why we have the recipe that we have, the mind that we have, the heart that we have, and the idea of the integration of the two so that the mind may serve the heart rather than the heart be slave to the mind. 
I hope that made sense because the magic is within your focus. So here in the first position, for those of you that picked angel reading number two is Archangel Michael asking you to have courage to make the divine life changes. In the opportunity, the obstacle is the patience card asking you to study and gather information and to observe your own energy. Aurora says you're flying high right now. Don't descend because you will soon inspire others. And then in the final position, we have Mystique telling you to keep charging ahead, to expect miraculous solutions. Um, astrologically, we are moving closer and closer into the age of Aquarius, and we have two planets that are residing in Aquarius right now. Aquarius represents the collective, it represents humanity, and many other things. But what I feel like when I'm looking at this is the intellect that Aquarius offers, the scientific mind, and the integration of science and and astrology, the unknown, the, the mystical of energy, because I feel like as I look at this spread, for those of you that picked angel reading number two, as you connect to your thoughts and you become more aware of the story of yesteryear versus the story of tomorrow and which story you're telling more often, you'll start seeing things either become repetitive and almost comical because you'll be the common denominator in the situation, or you'll start to see the evidence of your manifestation of what you want. And that will give you the courage to continue on and to know that the magic lies within you, that everything you need is within you and your willingness to be brave, to let it out. So joining Archangel Michael is the owl. Joining the patience card is the horse. Joining Aurora is the earth fairy and joining mystique is the movement card. Archangel Michael is the angel of great protection. In this particular deck though, he represents courage. The courage to make the changes that you know will truly make you happy regardless of whether or not you can see how the outcome will play out. Because what he's saying is that no matter what you look at, if you look at it long enough, you will find wisdom and deception, good and bad, black and white opportunity and obstacle. And so in being courageous, it's not the absence of fear. It's not the sureness of knowing the road ahead. It's the willingness to walk forward step by step, studying and gathering information about your own energy through the process. And in doing so, learning how, what, how and when to change directions and not necessarily to change directions in like jumping off the highway, but maybe it's time to change lanes on the same highway so that you can get more movement because Aurora is saying you're flying high right now. Don't descend that you will soon inspire others because you're creating a new foundation for yourself. I've been telling people, um, in my readings and in my personal private work with other people that many souls more than not are going through an activation right now. And that activation is an opportunity to step into the highest vibration of what they want to experience on this planet. And in doing so, it is not the absence of challenges to get there, but the willingness and the tenacity. And regardless of the age, not allowing yourself to be defined by these prehistoric markers. If you're of a certain age, you're not viable. If you, you know, you're older, you can't find love or, or a good job because I believe that you're breaking these barriers because you're starting to realize that the magic is inside of you. And that magic comes from your emotional body and knowing that it will completely replenish, constantly filling your cup. Because in the final position is mystique saying to keep charging ahead, expect miraculous solutions and there is the movement card. And the movement card says that as the more you step into the magic of your own creation, not the how of it, but how will it feel, then you will start to experience. And the more courage that you display, the more you will bring on experiences that will support the courage that will diminish the disempowering thoughts and turn them into thoughts that empower you. So fear will become a bit of a game you play with yourself. 
How much fear do I have about this situation? Is my fear viable? Is it current in this present situation or am I projecting out into the future? And as you do that, you inadvertently send a ripple effect for those in your environment. So it's pretty awesome. All right, let's go on to angel reading number three. For those of you that picked angel reading number three, I pulled the Kyle Gray card, Father Sky, trust in the unknown. And this really represents the connection to the angelic realm. It represents God and the angels. It represents divine wisdom. And I want to offer it this way because Estera just flew out of the deck in the first position saying to you deserve the best reach for the stars with your dreams and your desires. Um, I talk a lot about you know, the astrological aspects. And this idea of moving into the age of Aquarius is where science is going to actually prove that thoughts are things and create manifestation. I would not be surprised within the next 20 years or so if there are not studies that back up this energetic dynamic. And I feel like you, those of you that picked angel reading number three can start to really implement those things because the trust is not in some fairy god mother or father coming down and bestowing you with a bag of money it comes from a trust of a deeper knowing of your willingness to be brave in looking at your intentions your focus your actions your disposition and then what you're struggling with turning over to god to give you a new experience so that you may empower yourself Words don't teach, experience teaches. So as you walk through it, hard times, but you empower yourself over them and you take a minute to reflect on your triumph, you become more and more powerful. Because in the opportunity of the obstacle, Bridget is asking you to look deeper into a situation. Isaiah sits in the angel's uh, advice asking you to give birth to new ideas. And the final position is again, connecting with spirit with your intentions. And I want to say the idea lately that they've shown me the, the birth to new ideas is the idea that we evolve. You know, we watch our bodies age, we criticize our wrinkles, our, our roles, our softening bodies. And yet, when it comes to our emotional body and our, our spiritual bodies, and as we age and we learn, we don't usually give ourselves that much credit for that. Astera is being joined by the cat which to me is nine lives. Bridget is being joined by the high priestess. Isaiah is being joined by the joy card. And Layla is being joined by the truth. For those of you that picked angel reading number three, you have been asking, you have almost been begging spirit for a new situation, a new dynamic, a relief from the stress, the the tension of yesteryear, what wasn't really serving you. And now is a time to reach for the stars with your dreams and desires and to give life to that there are nine lives, maybe more. And your attention to that will stoke it because you literally have to really, con like I feel like those of you that picked angel reading number three have to sort of have a moment and decide how much have I been looking to my past? How much have I been looking to what is darker, more challenging? Bridges a card of caution, look deeper. So here I'm thinking, oh no, I'm looking at my past through caution versus trusting the evolved version of what I want for myself. Because spirit is literally saying, and Isaiah, the angel Isaiah is saying, it's time to move towards joy. And this is not trying to be happy in the midst of not feeling happy, but instead saying, I'm willing to look deeper. Am I really moving towards my happiness? Or have I been so focused on what isn't working that I've got a lot of momentum going there? Because as you become aware of that deeper truth, then spirit has an even bigger opportunity to help you have a new experience, to give life to a new idea of who and what you are in this incarnation. So this is an opportunity today. I said this for um, uh, one of the other readings. Today, the 14th of April, 2021, is a day where the sun is in Aries and the moon is in Taurus. 
these two planets are in their exaltation, in their most favorite house, the favorite sign, I should say, their favorite sign. And as a result of that, they are in their most favorable energy to create man being the sun, woman being the woman coming together. So taking a moment today or this week to set an intention, to look twice at what that intention is. Am I basing my intention on what I think I can create or what is authentically in my heart that I'm unsure that I can create? And then asking God and the angels to give you evidence that that yearning, that heart is valid and that there is um, evidence and that experience is coming down the line for you to, to enjoy. All right. That's it. Me, Terry Hunter. Again, I'm an angel therapy practitioner, Reiki master, intuitive guide, and empowerment coach. And I like to think of myself as an evolutionary astrologer. Um, if you'd like to book a private reading with me, I am available and taking new clients. So you're welcome to um, reach me through the contact information in the description below. And it is my intention to be back next week with another Pick Your Angel Card reading. Let's give ourselves two thumbs that that's really going to happen. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Sending lots of love to you all. Bye-bye.